This holiday shopping season is expected to reach just over $720 billion in sales, surpassing last year's sales by roughly 4.5%, according to the National Retail Federation. And with Christmas just days away, it can be easy to blow your budget on those last-minute gifts. So, how can you prevent going into debt while still enjoying the holidays? Here with some tips and ways to help you get financially fit in the new year is Dr. Albert Williams, Chair of Finance and Economics at NSU's Heizenga College of Business. Dr. Williams, great to have you with us. I'm very happy to be here. Let's talk about money, right? Yeah, let's talk money, money, <laughs> yeah. money. Yeah, listen, and this is the time that it's, Chris, we're in the home stretch. So folks are watching this program and they have those last minute gifts that they have to get. And sometimes they're just in such a rush, mm -hmm. they kind of blow the wad, right? So what, what do we need to think about when we head into the stores or online to get those last minute gifts? You know, the last minute gifts, a lot of people wait for last minute. <laughs> yeah. So when you wait for last minute, you're not as careful with your money management. I got to get gifts for five people and you just go in and buy whatever <laughs> comes there. Yes. And that's the <laughs> challenge there because you go and you will overspend. So my advice is yes you need to give those gifts to your loved ones especially your children the little ones especially but you must also be conscious of how much you're spending now the online shopping is the easy one but you know there's a deadline if you don't get it done by a certain time yeah. then you'll have to fight the crowds in the store so right. my recommendation is that you go in probably you should take a list Okay. And, and have a couple items and you go in, I'm going to get five items. I'm not going to spend more than 400 or $300 right. and go from there. So that, those are the kinds of things for last minute. To end the year, though, you need to think about, did I spend too much money? And that's the hardest question for right. people. Yeah. Parties, the, all the gifts, the travel, everything. Now, we like to link gifts with love, right? Yeah. And so, you know, hey, I give somebody a gift, the bigger the, the gift, the more the love. The more I love you. Uh, that's right. And I'm not sure <laughs> if that logic is always or true. Or unless it's in a little blue box. I could yeah. imagine the little blue box. <laughs> yeah. So we like to link money and happiness and love and all together. But if you don't have the money, that's where the trouble starts. So yeah. you have to, on, on the other hand, blend the two. You have sure. to say, I want the gifts. I want a good time at the end of the year. Right. But I need to have the the money to do it. Yeah, you have to have the money to do it. One of the things you had said to when we spoke earlier that's just really poignant and it's very important is to not borrow money in order to spend on Christmas because then that carries over into the new year and that kind of takes us to the next step where how can I be financially fit going into the new year? What thing, what little steps can I take right. to, the, to, to manage my money better? You know, the, the challenge of having a party and spending, many times you borrow and you go to the bank and you borrow and that takes a year or two to pay back like what you said. Yeah. That's just that's not a good idea because yeah. then you will never get out of debt. But I want to do something before we get to the tips, the pulse of the people. Well, I just stopped along the way and I said, let me talk to some people. I stopped at the <laughs> gas station and I talked to Jose. Okay. Jose said, Money problem is a global problem. Everybody has a money problem. Ah. And I thought I was very innovative. Okay. I met Patrick and he said, we all need money. I thought that was such a good, you don't even need the professor. Patrick said it all, we, we all, all need, need money. money. Yeah. You have Arkim, he said, it takes some money to make some money. He's a smart guy. Right. If you don't have any, how can you make? And my neighbor, Bill and Karen, they said, you know, the challenge is that we never seem to have enough. Mm. So money is there. We, yeah. need it. we need it. The question is, how can you get it and how can you use it wisely? Right. Maybe get your money to make money. So there you go into financial planning. So right. going into 2019, you have said before, get like a coach. You need a financial advisor if you don't have one. Right. So talk about that. Yeah, for a let's moment. talk about that one. You know, most people think that money is easy, just spend and you make and spend, but mm -hmm. there's an art, yeah, there's a lot mm -hmm. of very important decisions to make. So just like how you have your medical doctor mm -hmm. and you need to get advice, it's the same way you need a money doctor. We don't call them money doctor, well I'm a money doctor, but that's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. But you get call them financial advisors, sure. and you need to find one of those people because they will help you to say, you know, that decision to buy that second car, maybe not the wisest decision. Yeah. Maybe, or you, you want to buy a big car, maybe you should buy a smaller one. So it's always important to have somebody. They're not easy to find because you need somebody you could trust, like your medical doctor. They will tell you things that you have to listen. So how do you find a good financial sure. advisor? Well, I'll tell you, ask your friends. Mm. You could go to universities. Mm -hmm. There's so many hundreds of them out there. You mm -hmm. need to 
-hmm. see their record. Sure. But you could literally go online and you'll find many financial advisors. But you need to become, so that's the first one. You need okay. to have financial a financial advisor. Financial number advisor. two. The number two one is get financial education. I did a survey about 4,000 people across the United States, and that was one of the number one challenge. 75% mm -hmm. of them had no idea of how wow. to manage their money. Isn't that amazing? It is. Yeah. And so I would say for nine, 2019, all of you out there listening to me, get, educated. get some financial education. Yeah. You don't have to go take a course. I'd love you to come to the NSU and take a <laughs> course with me, but you could go take a short course. You could do a few little things. Your church might have some education. You could go online. You could go to software like Mint. There are different software, yes. Better Mint, and you could go there and learn yeah. as much as about you can. money. Because if you don't, then you continue spending and waste it. We yeah. don't want to waste it. Right. So number three, what would be the next uh, Number best three, tip? I love this one, is you need to sit down and plan. You need to take action and you need to evaluate your results. Mm. Most people live day to day. They don't mm -hmm. worry about what will happen. But you need to stop during the holidays and mm -hmm. say, you know what? How have I been doing financially? Mm. Have I been managing my money well? And if not, just like when we're trying to lose weight, the same idea, you have to say, I want to make a savings of 5000 next year. That just doesn't happen out of the magic. You have to start putting down so much sure. a month, so much a month. By December, you got the 5000 Somebody will tell you, well, that's not a lot. That's a whole 5000 more than you had the year before. So right. that is a critical piece. You need to plan. You need to take action. As I was telling my friends earlier today, your other guests, mm -hmm. that talk is cheap. Action is what it takes mm -hmm. to make people money, get real money in their yeah, pockets. So right. that would be a third good tip. Right, right. Another good thing, too, would be at work, take advantage of your 401k. Some people don't max out the 401k, and a lot of it's matched by your employer. So that's almost free money there. That right? is one of the first ones. If you have a job, the next thing you should see is when will I get matched? When will I be vested? Oh, those right. are very important questions. And you're right, take the maximum. My university has a good matching plan, mm -hmm. and these are things that anybody who is working should do that. Now, many people don't have this, so they have to create their own, like sure. if you have your own business, you know. So yeah. those are good, good ideas. Yeah. We have about 30 seconds left. Give us a tip that we can teach our kids. What's important to teach the kids? Oh, I said the best Christmas gift your kid, or the best gift you could give your kids is uh, learning to manage their money. Yeah. And so, but the last one I want to talk about is managing your credit card. Okay. The credit card, a lot of people max them out. And if I, yeah. well, they don't leave one tip, this is the tip that everybody needs. Never pay the minimum on a credit card per month. You will never pay it yeah. off. And if okay. you pay it off, you will pay uh, 60 or 70 percent interest rate over over time. So pay more than the minimum. Poor way, pay more than the minimum to keep the interest rates down. Dr. Williams, great to have you with us. We've got to have you back. There's so much more to talk about. There right? is. Thank you very much. Thank you. And do you have a comment or a question about getting financially fit in 2019? We'd love to hear from you. Send us your take on this or any topic that matters to you. You can always reach us by email or via our Twitter or Facebook page at yourself FL. Leave us a comment or post a video. We look forward to hearing from you.